Hi everyone, Paul ISL. Welcome to part two of our E30 Jägermeister BMW M3 build. So, as you saw on the last build, we got it all painted, decaled, and ready for 2K. Um, in this video, we're going to 2K. We're going to get all the chassis cleaned up and painted. We're going to get all the running gear painted and assembled. We're going to um, glue it all in place, get some of the photo etch on, and get our resin wheels painted up, sprayed, and in place, ready on the vehicle. Um, now the 2K video I uploaded the other day separately, uh, Splash 2K, went down fantastic as you'll see in a minute. Um, so what I've done, I've used that review, condensed it a bit, a bit quicker um, to get through the build a little bit faster. So if you want to watch the full 2K video, I'll link it in the description and it's a couple of days back on the channel, that's all. A bit more of an in-depth video, show all the process from start to finish. Like I say, this one's cut quite a bit. So we're progressing with the build well, I'm hoping... One more video I'll have it done. Uh, and if I can do these in three videos, I'll be very happy. It means we'll get more of them. So fingers crossed. Hope I've included enough information about each step. We're not going to elaborate on it because we've already done that before. The only thing I'll elaborate on is when things are different or something we've never covered before. Then I'll stick with it and we'll go through it all. But for the most part, we're just going to get through the build, show it as step by step and get it finished. It's looking great at the minute. You'll see a picture of it at the end. I uh, put the body on. The chassis with the wheels, the wheels are an unbelievably tight fit, like literally just fit in place. Um, but they look good. They've got a bit of a weird camber on them, a little bit too much, I think. Um, but that's how they are. There's no way around that, so that's how they're going to be. But it looks good. It sits nice and low on its body, and it looks awesome. The splash paints from last time look amazing. Uh, they cover fantastically, and just so deep and orange, it looks great. Decals are great, and the 2K has gone down really well. Once you get this 2K, a flat and a polish is going to look great. Uh, this is going to be one really striking car, it really is. Right, so let's crack on with the build. Let's dive straight into the spray booth and we'll get our 2K down and then progress with the build and I'll come back at the end. Okay, so we're in our spray booth. We've got our clear coat from Splash in the 60ml bottle. And we've got our activator in the 30ml bottle. They're mixed 2 to 1. So 2 parts clear to 1 part hardener. And there's no thinner provided. We've got a Jägermeister E30 BMW and the Ultimate Model Products Apex Airbrush. Um, we're going to be spraying a 30 psi today, as recommended by Splash themselves. And I'm just cleaning out the airbrush of some old thinners. Uh, we're going to tack, de tack the car first. We've got a tack cloth, which is cut to size. And this is cheap. I get about 10 cars per tack cloth. You get about 10 tack cloths for about £5. They remove any dust or residue that's on the body. It's basically a very slightly sticky. Um, cloth. You run it round, it'll pick anything up which should be there and it's another step worth taking to ensure a clean body. So we've got two medicine cups that'll become apparent why in a minute and we're going to start with our clear coat. It's a seal bottle. Sadly I can't get the seal off because I've got no nail visible and although it is a seal bottle I can get the top back off and probably back on and leave the seal intact which well it's one of those things. Remove the seal and get this well out of the way. We're not leaving it on the bench and blowing it around into the model later on. Now, I'm not going to run out halfway through, so I'm going to mix a little bit more than I think I need. So we're going to mix about 12 milliliters of the clear and 6 mil of the hardener. Now, normally I do about 6 to 8 mil of clear and 3 to 4 mil of hardener. Um, but because we're testing it today, I've mixed a little bit more just to ensure we don't run out halfway through filming. So, we've unwrapped the activator now that was sealed. Like I say, we're doing this totally blind. I've never used this before. So, it's going to be a real test. And we're going to pop in 6 milliliters of the activator. Like I say, there's no thinner provided. Whether we're going to need any, I don't know. But if we do, Mr. Hobby level and thinner is recommended. We've got a pipette I'm going to use as a stirrer today. Only because my stirrer is out of reach. Give it a real good mix up. And there we are. Right, now something else I started doing recently is straining my paints. This is a, I can't remember which micron it is, but it's a very fine uh, strainer for paint. I'm just going to blow through underneath, get rid of any dust. A bit dust. And then we've got our 2K. I've been doing this with all the lacquer paints. And the 2K is quite some time. Whether it's worth doing, I don't know, but I'm getting less muck in the 2K. Uh, so for the cost of, I think, the £5 for 100, the more expensive, Again, it's another step we're taking. So we've gone from one part to another, strained it, it goes through nice and quick, and now we're ready to airbrush. So the airbrush is nice and clean. 
I cleaned it out last night. It's been left with some proprietary thinner in there overnight. And we're just blowing it through. Off camera, I'm giving it a wipe over just to make sure we are totally clean, which we now are. UMP Apex is perfect for this job. It's a 0.35mm needle. Um, it will get a lot of paint out should you need it. And uh, I've not found a better airbrush yet for this job. And I've tried quite a few. So put our cap on, save us spraying any, spilling any. And we're just doing a test spray as well. Like I say, we're at 30 psi. It's approximately 10 degrees centigrade outside and about 22 in my cave. Now, another important step, uh, wetting the work surface. Another tip I got the other day uh, was using puppy training pads. Uh, they're just big enough to fit in your spray booth. They're not all that expensive. Nice and absorbent and easy to throw away once done. So again, I might um, pick that up. I'm going to butcher his name, but I think the translation is Matt. Mattel. Uh, thank you, buddy. Met him at Telford and a uh, great guy. Really nice guy. I've been chatting to him quite a lot. And it was a good tip by him. I've seen other people recommend it as well. But I think I'll give it a go. I believe you can pick up about 100 of them for £12. So we'll give it a whirl and see. Always up for trying something new. So we're just checking the body for any dust or fluff or hair stuck to it. Give it a blow over with the airbrush to blow anything off. And then we're going to come in and put a semi wet coat down. Um, this will help protect the decals a bit and give us our tack uh, coat for subsequent wet coats. Uh, now, no thinners in this at all, and even when there is, it's very little, 10% uh, at most, most of the time. So 2K is safe over most decals. The only time we've ever had an issue is if the decal's not been properly set, say in a door shut or over a panel line. So that's why I cut them and make sure they're well and truly set in there. Uh, other than that, I've never really had any trouble with the decal so there we go there's a semi wet coat so i work systematically i'll do both sides first then the front and rear bumper then the front bonnet or hood of your american the roof and the boot lid and it's just how i work methodically and um, ensuring i get every angle covered especially around the bumpers there's lots of little inlets and number plates and recesses and just make sure you angle it to make sure you're getting everywhere as I said before, use the light to your advantage. I've got a decent LED light in the spray booth now. Angle the body towards the light so you can sleep the reflectiveness of the wet coat as it goes down. You can also see any flaws or dust or what have you. And just methodically all around the car. We're not trying to get a wet coat. We're literally trying to pour a semi-wet tack coat down in this case. <clears throat> Last bit on the bonnet. And we're all good. As you see, we're on the Tamiya stand as usual. Uh, it is taped inside as well. Um, this is a newer stand. As you see, I've had to use some insulation tape. It's not as good as my older one. Um, the prongs that open up to widen it seem to like to pop out. So it's wrapped to death with insulation tape inside. And then where the uh, prongs sit inside the body, there is masking tape to hold it there as well. So there we go. There's the body done. So that now goes into my drawer out the way. The drawer is closed to keep any dust off it. And we've got our spoiler and our two wing mirrors. Somebody asked me the other day, thinking these are lights. They're actually the wing mirrors. Um, they're still attached to the sprues, but the attachment points are inside the mirror uh, where it touches the car. So I can clean those up. And for now, it's a very handy way of spraying them because they're still held on. As you see, it makes a short work. Now, again... As I said the other day with the smaller parts, be careful painting them. Coverage is a lot faster. There's a lot less area to cover. And it's very, very easy to flood it. So just take your time. And there's no rush. Right, we're on to coat number two. That's been allowed to flash off for five minutes. Uh, we're just having a little visual inspection. Make sure we've got no hairs. Or dust. So we can come back in now with our wetter coat. Uh, not quite as heavy as the final coat, but wet enough that we can actually see the clear coat going down. Now, the splash clear coat is a lot thinner than anything I've used out of the bottle. Uh, like I said, there's no thinner in this, and it's laying down absolutely beautiful. Like I said, it's systematic go all around, making sure even coverage, keeping out for any orange peel. We're not really getting it down wet, we're just getting it down so we can physically see the wet coat. That real wet coat will do right at the end. until we're happy with what we've got. But fantastic, it lays down really well. No drama at all. 
So this is how it looks after our first wet coat. So we're onto coat number three now, as you can see. We've got a nice shine already. It's not perfect, but it's there. We're building it up slowly. And now we're going to come back with our proper full wet coat. So just having a good look around for any imperfections, any dust or fluff we can remove. Uh, like I say, the airbrush is loaded up again with the 2K. We're still unthinned. We're going completely unthinned out the bowl. And we're going to get down our full wet coat. So really opening the airbrush up on this one. Like I say, it's a bit thinner, so time and care is needed to ensure that the coverage uh, isn't too much. I did manage to get a run on this, uh, which got rectified by sanding, but that's the thing of using a new product. Like I said, we went in blind with this, um, but still very happy with the results, as we'll see in a minute. But we've really opened up the brush a bit now. Still 30 PSI. But we're just pulling back in our trigger a bit more and slowing down the flow a little bit so we get more paint down. And as you'll see in a minute, the clear coat's gone down absolutely fantastic. It really has. Nice and easy to use. A lot of people are giving feedback that without having to mix it, uh, it's a lot less daunting. But even if you do mix it, it's not too bad at all. Sadly, we do have a hair on the boot lid. It's just one of those things that happens from time to time. Uh, thankfully, the boot spoiler will cover where that is. So once we flat it, we shouldn't even see it. So here we go. This is about an hour after spraying. As you can see, We've got a real nice shine there. As I said in my review, it could probably have put a slightly thinner coat on, but going in blind. There's our uh, hair on the boot lid. Real shame that, but luckily it's right where the spoiler goes, so it is going to hide the most of it. But we're going to flat that for our next video and give it a polish up to remove any flaws. But very happy with how that looks out the gun. Like I say in my review, it's definitely the best 2K out the gun I've shot so far. Uh, time will tell once we take it back and give it a good polish what it's going to look like. So we're on to our chassis. So this is the chassis we painted up last time. Painted up in the zero paints at Jaeger Meister Orange because we ran out of the splash. The roll cage has been done as well. So they're all ready. Uh, the interior tub has been done as well. So we're all ready to go. Now we're going to pick out some parts of the chassis to detail paint. And we've got the running gear to clean up and paint as well. So the engine needs painting up in silver. We've got the exhaust in an exhaust colour. The cooler at the back there as well. The back section at the back needs painted in black. Which as you can see there, we put it next to it. That's what we got. So a little bit of masking and some careful brush painting. I did contemplate masking and spraying, but it was just too fiddly to mask. So we're going to paint the engine, uh, the exhaust... Mask off that black bit of the back. We then got all the running gear to do, so suspension struts, disc brakes. We've got P to put on those as well, which is shown there at the bottom. We've got our steering rod and the A arms to put on as well. Obviously, our wheels to sort, which we painted last time, the exhaust to do. And then we can start getting some of the P parts on and get our wheels on, and then crack on with the interior in the next part. So the nice simple kit there's not a massive amount of running gear and not, not a massive amount of interior either. Right, so to start off, we've got Vallejo's black. We've masked off the straight edges as good as we can. The rest we're going to carefully detail paint. So this is Vallejo's model colour black. We've thinned it with a couple of drops of water. And we're just going to be as careful as we can and paint it around all the details. It's not going to be perfect. It's just one of those things. But masking looked way too tricky. I certainly wasn't sitting there all day masking this off. So the idea of this is go over the paint as little as you can, but ensuring you've got equal coverage all the way around. And we're just carefully hand painting around these details because that wheel well needs to stay orange. And it's a case of just covering it all until we're happy we've got it. And as you can see, the model colour paints great. We use the Tamiya flat brush, which we sell at UMP. Uh, these are nice, cheap, high quality brushes. The word doesn't normally go together, but it is a Tamiya product. They do go together well. As you can see, that model colour, it's an ideal brush paint. Covers really well. Very highly pigmented as well. A lot more than model air and such. A little bit off camera, I do apologise. But we're just going to paint this. Some careful painting, and it will look just fine. Any excess paint can remove to a cotton board or a cocktail stick until you're happy. And that's that. Okay, so there we go, we're just finishing off the final touches. Uh, I'll pop a few rogue pieces of paint. Quite happy how that's gone. Starting to dry nice and flat and matte. Don't forget to get up the sides at the back as well. 
but for the most part that will do us uh, like I said, I would rather have masked it and sprayed it, but it was just too tricky to mask. I'd have been there for a good hour or so masking it when painting it took no more than 10, 15 minutes. So, cleanup is simple. We have some Ultimate Airbrush Cleaner in a tub or pot, bottle. And I just keep the lid on and we use this cleaner brush, a couple of swirls inside, wipe off on the edge. I wipe off on some tissue and that's it, nice and clean. For the next part, this will work with all. Uh, alcohol or water-based acrylics obviously for lacquer you have to use a lacquer thinner now we've got some citadel mithril silver sadly no longer available i believe it's been replaced with rung fang steel uh, these brush paint very very nice and airbrush great as well um, because we're putting silver over a very deep orange it's going to need multiple coats it's thinned with a touch of water literally a touch um so we're going to probably need three to four coats on this to get good coverage over it. And again, the key is don't keep going over the same part. Get your paint down, let it settle, get it nice and even, and then leave it be. Like I say, it's going to take three or four coats because the silver, the orange is quite strong. Um, so don't try and get it on in one go. Just get even coverage all around until you're happy that you've got it covered. What's got a little cooler back? I'm assuming this is an oil cooler. I'm actually not 100% sure what it is. Is it an oil cooler, cooler for the diff? If you know, let me know in the chat. Well, not the chat, the comments. But again, I'm just giving this a paint up. Some careful paint work, even with this big flat brush. You can be quite precise. As you see, I'm using the edge of the brush for the details. And again, on smaller parts like this, don't try and cover it in one go. Take your time. And build it up slowly. They'd rather put a couple of coats on them, one thick one, and lose all the detail. Now we're onto the air jacks. There's four of them around the car. And again, using the edge of the brush, we just go around and give these a touch up of paint. Two to three coats on each one will get even coverage without losing detail. We're now finishing off our engine. As you can see, really starting to look nice now. Once we get a wash onto this, it'll really look the part. But three to four coats has covered it well. Now, I'm wrestling with a bottle of paint. We've got uh, Mr. Hobby H28, which is the metal black. Uh, shaken, leaves a bit of residue in the lid. We had a couple of drops of Mr. Leveling Thinner. Grab our brush again. And we're going to use this on um, the running gear. So the prop shaft on the chassis is getting this first. I did wrongly paint the exhaust in this colour first and remembered I do them in steel. So quickly backtracked and repainted that later on. So, as you'll see, the exhaust is the wrong colour. It's a little bit off camera, I do apologise. We're just going to paint the prop shaft. In this one, my favourite colour is this. It's a nice colour. Uh, it gives a nice metallic black finish. Rather than just doing it in black, it adds a bit of a metallic sheen to it. Uh, this is the colour I use in all my running gears, bits and bobs and what have you. A mix of the level and thinner. It push paints really, really well. It really does. Goes on nice and even, dries quick. And there's no problems going back over it again once it's setting. And it does cover really well. Like I said, I apologize for being off camera a little bit. My camera's moved forward a little bit without me realizing. Uh, I've got new overhead lamps. And they're a bit more tricky to mount the cameras on <laughs> than the older ones. So I'm still getting used to it. But we'll get there in the end. As you see, to cover that well, it gives a nice metallic sheen. And we'll rectify their exhaust color a little bit later on. We've also got the fire extinguisher to paint as well, which we'll do red off camera. And that'll be left to dry and everything given a wash. So it's clean up of the running gear. So we've got the exhaust to do, uh, brake discs, the suspension struts, um, so on and so forth. We'll just clean up the exhaust with um, a sponge sander. We've opened up the end of the exhaust with a pin vise as well to give that hollowed look to the exhaust. And we're just getting rid of all the seam work along the edge of all the parts uh, and get them prepared for primer. So go over the 240 sponge and then giving a buff with our buffer so here we are in the spray booth we've got all the parts on our stand we've got the UMP Apex ready to go and some ultimate grey primer as well using grey today there's a few different colours required um, black's not always the best I use black for metallic but for the rest of the parts we're going to use grey um, just so we can see it going down I normally use black but a lot of the running gear parts are often white but on the BMAX kits they tend to be black so it be, can be quite difficult to see the black primer going down. So grey is fine, it'll still cover well. 
And again, we're putting a nice light coat down. I'm not trying to cover the whole thing in the first coat. As you can see, let's put to one side. We grab another part. And we start again. We're at about 25 PSI. Um, the primer is as it is at the bottle. It's not warmed up for this. And the Apex does a fantastic job. So, once all the grey parts are done, we move on to black primer. The airbrush is cleaned out very quickly. You can even leave a bit of the grey in there. It doesn't need to do a full colour change clean. Um, the grey and black will go together fine. And spray it through till you get black. What we're going to do now, we're going to spray up the exhaust in preparation for some of the AK Extremes. Um, the disc brake's the same as well. Anything metallic, I would generally prime in UMP black. Unless it's a high shine metallic, I'll use the gloss black. But for this part, this is just our standard black. The exhausts have plenty of angles to do. Again, don't hose the paint on. Do multiple coats. Keep coming back. Just make sure you get all those different angles. Now, we've got some Mr. Colour. Um, I think it's C3. I forget the code now. The Apex again. Uh, this is the Mr. Hobby level of then. It's a lacquer paint. And it's my preferred colour now for anything that needs spraying in red so what we've done we've done our suspension struts in gray and now we're going to spray the springs in red so this is going to need multiple coats again although it's lacquer and you can put it on a little bit quicker because it dries a lot faster we're still going to do light multiple coats put it aside grab another one do another coat so on and so forth once this is then dried a quick little bit of masking with some azu tape we can come back spray it black and it's a quicker way of painting them um, the other way is to, uh, I could brush paint the red um, and then spray it, or you could spray it all black and then try and brush paint the red, but it doesn't look good over black, so I like to do it this way. The Mr. Colour Paint being lacquer dries really quick, really hard, really tough, and uh, I am definitely going more over to lacquers now than ever before. Got a nice range of Mr. Colour Paints, and this always looks good. So there we go, we're just finishing off the last coat of red. And there you go, you can see it's a nice vibrant red now. We're just giving it one last little spray over. And then we move on to our metal colours. So, AK Extreme Aluminium for our differential. Uh, we'll spray the whole thing in it and then detail paint the other parts later on. Spray it about 15 psi, this stuff goes on great. In fact, it's that good, you can spray it at really high pressure should you wish. We then got some AK Interactive Extreme Steel. And we're going to paint up our exhaust. In this again, nice thin coats, building it up, but you really can abuse the stuff. It's enamel paint, so it can go on nice and thick. Uh, at the minute, this and the Mr. Hobby Super Metallics are my go to metallic colours. Being enamel, they need a little bit longer to dry. As long as you're not forcing the part in place, it won't impart any fingerprints. But if you need any force, let the parts dry overnight at least, because that's the nature of enamel. Now we've got gun metal. We're going to spray up our calipers. Now normally I'd spray the discs in silver, uh, steel, sorry, and then hand paint the calipers in uh, whatever colour is appropriate. But because we've got photo etch for the discs, we can spray our calipers today the other way around. So I've chose gun metal, and again, nice light coat. Just build it up. Once we start getting it down, you can really start putting on a little bit heavier. But just bear in mind, the heavier the coats, the longer it will take to dry. You know, it's a nice colour. I have a reference book and it's more of a grey colour, but I knew once I added a wash it would dull it down a bit. So chose the gun metal and I think I got the match pretty well. So this is how the chassis looks now. Everything's detail painted, ready to go. It looks okay. We've got all our parts we sprayed in the spray booth. So um, most of the running gear that's black has been sprayed in Mr. Colour Semi Gloss Black. Again, another lacquer paint, and everything else was done as we just showed. So we've got the detail upset for the BMW. Uh, the P isn't attached by the fret, it's stuck on the back by the paper, well, the sticky tape. So you need a way of removing it that doesn't bend it. And I found the easiest way to do it is to slide your knife blade underneath and then gently work the blade around, lifting the part off. What you don't want to do is bend the disc in half because you end up with a crease. So a little bit of messing around, there we go. It's like a gorilla fumbling a football. I did say fumbling. There we go. Once you get most of it off, we can then ease it off. You'll probably ping off onto the bench. Get there eventually. Sorry about the flickering on screen. I haven't turned my 
LED lamp up to full power and it flickers ever so slightly when it's not. I realise in a little bit, and we'll fix that in a minute. Quick test fit, and it fits absolutely perfect. There we go, looks great. Once we get an oil wash on that caliper, it'll be a nice difference between both colours. If you want to, you can paint it in a grey, or whatever colour you think's right. For me, I like the gunmetal. So once you're happy with the fit, we grab some CA glue. I'm going to apply a couple of dabs in place to hold the, the disc. Using the rocket. Um, this is the medium setting one, I believe. I normally like to use the yellow one, which is slightly faster setting. But my lid's glued on. <laughs> and I haven't uh, cleared it yet. So a couple of dabs. Keep it away from the drilled uh, indents, because otherwise it will show through the PE. If it does show through, grab some acetone or nail varnish cleaner and a cotton bud and lightly rub it away and it will remove the super glue. But the less damage you do in the first place, the better everything is. Make sure you get this the right way around. They are handed. I'm just checking. There you go. You can tell by looking at it. Pop it in place. Try not to glue your fingers to the disc. And a little bit of persuasion with a cocktail stick. Stick one edge, then work your way around. It may need a little bit extra CA glue in places just to grab it. And if it does, just ease it up. Get a little bit underneath like I'm about to do. And then you can push it down. Hold it for a few seconds. Let the CA glue do its job. A little bit on the edge there. And there we go. Very nice. The P discs look absolutely great. You can even scuff them up if you wanted. A little bit of uh, sandpaper to give them a true worn look. But all my vehicles have a new look, so I don't do that. But you can do should you wish. Like I say, once we get a wash on there, we'll see a nice difference between the disc and the caliper. But there we go. Nice worthy addition. Right, so all four discs are now glued in place on the calipers and the old discs. Um, we've got the two front suspension struts in place, and we're just going to put the um, top part on top. and just get a little bit of sea glue in place. As you can see, you don't need tons of it. Just make sure it goes around the parts that need gluing together. We'll pop it on. Once we do it, we get the subframe in place. Now, there's about six locating points on the subframe. Uh, the six parts on the actual chassis of the car, and the two steering points on there as well. I've sped this up a little bit because we've got quite a lot to get through. As you can see, pushing them all in, make sure they're all placed fully home and glued and that leaves us with fully steerable steering. You get the steering rod in place yeah, and use our tweezers to push it home. And there we go, the steering actually works. Rear suspension, again, these are handed so make sure you're putting the right side on and you've got the discs pointed in the right direction. And make sure you put your poly caps in there for your wheels as well. Just follow the instructions, you can't go wrong. A little bit of CA glue, a little bit of a squeeze together, pop it in, hold it in place. There we go. Same for the other side. Again, I will notice in a minute a flickering light, and I will fix that. I do apologize. There we go. Have a little look what's next. There we go. The rear subframe on as well. Six locating points, two on the car body, two on the suspension struts. They click in really nicely. And there we go. And so it's done. Very happy. So I'm going to quick look at my reference book, making sure we've got the discs the right orientation, which we have. Happy days. And now on to the exhaust. And as you can see, I've painted the exhaust now the same color as the rear section and back boxes. And we're just gluing this in place. Once we're happy, there we go. We can give this a bit of a, a wash. So we've got the Tan Tamiya Panel Line Marker wash. This is an enamel-based wash. It's what we've done all the running gear with, as you can see. It's all been done in this wash. So we're just giving it to any areas uh, that need it, inside the exhaust tips as well. And this will just add a little bit of a weathering effect and add a bit of visual interest to the parts themselves. So all the weld lines, any seams, any recessed areas, We'll get it. As you can see, it's a pretty well detailed chassis underneath. Uh, it's not too much to do. Like I say, it's a good, quick build. If you're looking for a decent kit to build, I highly recommend this BMW. It is a great kit. 
it's definitely one of my favourite kits I've built. Uh, this is the fifth time I've built the kit, so it obviously shows through. And I will build many, many more because I've got lots and lots of decal schemes for this car. Um, both rally and touring. And there we go. A little bit of wash. So, add a bit in. A little bit extra we don't need there. So, we'll grab a cotton bud. And don't touch where it's pulled up because the, the cotton bud will pull it out. We'll just wipe off the top surface and we can let that dry. So, now, a bit of reference. We grab my BMW book. What we're looking at is the colour for the wheel lock nuts. So, they are silver out of the box. Uh, my picture shows them to be a kind of titanium gold. So, we're just going to have a quick test fit into the wheel itself. And they look fantastic. The rims are beautiful. Again, sorry about the flicker. And there you go. I've just realised, see, magic, it's gone. Turn the power up on the light. There we go. The wheels are beautiful. They're a big improvement over the kit ones. So off camera, I've sprayed the uh, lock nuts up in a titanium gold. I'll show you that in a second. Right now, we're going the tyres in place. Now, the thin part of the tyre goes to the rear, and the fatter part goes to the front. So make sure you've got the more tainted the right way. Now, because we're resin wheels, put them down on a flat surface and just gently push the rim on. Don't apply too much pressure, or you stand a good chance of fracturing the rim over there. So once all the tyres are on, we can come back with our decals. So it's a Pirelli um, tyred car. I've got some aftermarket decals. I think these are from Blue Stuff. I think. I forget now. But if you look around, there are various manufacturers that sell aftermarket decals for the tyres. The kit itself comes with Yokohama, and they're the wrong ones according to my research. So we grab four of these. They're just normal decal water slide stickers. A uh, little bit of water, let them sit for a couple of minutes and we can apply them and hit them with decal solutions until they're set. <coughs> there we go. After it's been in the water, quick dip into this micro set and then pop it in place. Make sure it's equally spaced, it's on the right angle. And I put it to one side and go around all the others and get those in place. Then we can come back, get rid of the excess moisture and get our microsole on top and start setting in place. They can be tricky to set, so it can take a few goes. Like I say, we get rid of all the excess moisture. They do move around a lot. They take a long time to react to the decal solution. So if it does move, it's not necessarily the end of the world. It's something to do. This is a microsole now going on top. It's something to do and then leave them to one side. So what I will do, we will put this on, put it to one side, let the microsole do the work, and then later on, come back with a quick apply of solver set, which is a much more uh, aggressive one. And that'll do the work. So there's our lock nuts painted in titanium silver. So what I've done, I used uh, Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Super Titanium and add a little bit more gold until I'm happy with the colour. Because for me, titanium has a slight gold hue and none of these out-of-the-box paints do. So our decals are set nicely in place. Starting to settle down, so we grab our water brush with a little bit of Walther Solver Set. Like I said, it's a bit more aggressive, so it'll set the decal a lot better than the Microsol. And again, go around them all just very quickly and gently. They still will move at this point, so be very careful. In fact, I think one of them moves on me in a minute. Just take your time. You don't need tons of the stuff. And try and keep it away from paint as well. There you go, see it move? So just take your time. If it's moving, it's it's not properly down, so I'd normally go with the edges on that. Right, we grab our lock nuts. They've been drying for a while. We'll pick them up with tweezers, pop them into the centre of the wheel. So we've got a nice contrast between the super fine silver and my homemade titanium colour. Now, obviously, because, again, they are resin, we're not going to apply any pressure to that wheel at all. We're going to hold the car on the subframe suspension just gently push with the tweezers in the center of the lock nut. Now, this may scratch the paint a tad inside. But we're going to put another wash in that in a little bit. So that'll hide that, and it won't be any drama at all. So again, as you can see, we've not applied paint at the bottom. That allows us to get into the uh, polycap properly. Also be aware that those tire decals, if they're not fully dry, uh, you do stand a chance of damaging, so take your time, especially when putting the body on. The body is a very, very tight fit, Put the tyre decals at the bottom. So as you're looking at the car on the ground, put the tyre decals at 6 o'clock. 
to keep them away from the body because I have had the body scratch the tire decals off before. Again, no pressure to the rim. We're putting pressure on the lock nut until it's in place. And these things literally only just fit. They are huge. Um, this is all four of them in place now. We've got our panel line marker black again. And we're just putting a little bit of wash inside the rim, around the edge of the hex, and around the edge of the wheel inside as well. Not a lot. We're not going to have to remove any of it, but we're just putting enough in there that the capillary action carries it around and highlights those lock nuts. Once you've done this and it's dried, it really will look the part and adds a little bit of detail. The rims are beautiful. They really are. They're a big improvement over the kit ones. Take a little bit more work. You need to be a bit more careful. But as you can see, they look stunning. Once we get the body on, which you're about to see any second, there it is. As you can see, that thing sits right in its arches. And it looks great. Like I said, I think the camber is a little bit too much. But we've got what we've got. And that's how we look for today. Right, so there you go. As you can see by the picture, she's looking good. Really is looking good. Like I say, hoping one more part will get this done. And then we can move on uh, to our next video build, which I will announce in a bench update a little bit later on. Um, so, yeah. Hope you find it useful. Hope there's enough information in there. Let me know if I've condensed it too much. Because uh, I always make an extra video. Not now. But in future builds, I think I've got it about right. Um, but let me know if too much info is missing. Like I say, we covered the main techniques in the Subaru video. So you want to see something more in depth, you can go back to watch those. These are just the build and my processes along the way. Like I say, if anything's different, I'll cover it as we go. So there we go. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, as always, leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. I'll reply to everybody. Uh, give me some feedback if you liked it, if you didn't like it. Whatever. I'm not, I don't care. Uh, either way. Uh, and as always, check out the links in the description. So you've got the ISM Facebook page and forum, uh, the Muddling Hangout group for the off-air hangout. So who needs a webcam and mic, come join us off-air, have some fun with us. Uh, we've got the Live the Bench page as well uh, for the Friday Night Live show. We've got umpretail.com. All the products I use, you can find on there. Tamiya kits, Tamiya tools, all the little Sujibido files. Everything's on there, so go and have a look there as well. Check out my Paul ISM modeling page where all my personal modeling work goes. Um, and check out modelemporium.shop. Uh, that's Frey's shop. We very kindly donated the uh, E30 BMW for this. And check out um, premiumhobbies.co.uk, which is Ed's shop. And he barely kind of donated the 2K Clear, uh, which we use today, which appears to have gone down very well. Time will tell. Let's see what a flat's like, which we'll find out in the next video. And hopefully it'll polish up nice. So there we go. Like I say, any feedback, feel free to leave me. And uh, in the run up to Christmas, Merry Christmas. Hope you get everything that you want. And uh, hope to see some decorated caves around the Tinter web. There we go. Thanks for watching today. We'll be back probably in three more days with this build finished. And uh, we'll see what she looks like. So thanks for watching today. Take care. Bye-bye.